This subject is that of biometrics. Now, this is not exactly completely uh, a forensic study, but it does touch upon ideas in forensics. Uh, in a way, it's really about like the future of identifying people and using them, you know, to catch them, to know uh, who they are and how to find them in a crowd. But uh, anyway, the subject is biometrics. That uh, the the word comes from you know bio and metric bio meaning a person you know living thing but in this guy's people uh, and metric you know measures of people how do I identify people by their measurements but in a very futuristic way now the original way was uh, for the Bertillonage you know from Alphonse Bertillon he measured arms and ears and uh, legs and uh, Distances and various bodily bodily measurements, but uh, this is like more a computer does it by just you know taking a picture of you and there you go we can identify you in a crowd. Um, so goes the theory. Uh, biometrics, by the way, includes fingerprints and uh, we know about DNA. Uh, that fingerprints is a bodily measurement that you can use to identify one single person, and DNA also. You when uh, DNA is specific to a certain a specific person, and uh, when we measure and get the information from the DNA, we can identify the person. So technically, these those are also biometrics, but we're talking about the more futuristic ones, uh, like facial recognition, voice recognition, and even uh, gait recognition. Now, facial recognition is pretty much uh, what people are trying to do, and it's what we as human beings do all the time. We can look at somebody and say, hey, I recognize that person. And you can recognize them in a room immediately. Now, what we want to do, or we, I don't know about we, but some people want, what they want is to be able to get a video of a crowd, focus on one of the faces, and immediately identify him and relate him to all kinds of files that you have on him. Uh, like, for example, there's a criminal running loose. Well, just put a, one of, you know, just look at the videos of all the train stations nearby and put in your biometric uh, programs and it'll scan every single face and it'll identify the guy. So that's facial recognition. Looking at the face, getting information from a person's face or at least a picture of a person's face and being able to identify him with that using a computer. I mean, again, people do it all the time. It's not uh, that reliable. It's reliable enough for us, but it's not reliable in a courtroom necessarily by saying, oh, I uh, recognize him. Uh, well, it's better if a computer does it, then we have actual, real, physical data of recognizing the person using facial recognition. We can talk a little bit about that a little bit later. Voice recognition, that is, uh, it's okay, but it's really hard to recognize a person in a crowd just by his voice. Uh, so we can you know, put a person's voice into uh, a computer program and identify the voice print. The thing is, you have to have his voice, and that's not always easy to get. There's gait recognition. This is, again, this is in the future, where you can identify a person based on the way he walks. Now, we don't really do that but as human beings, but it is, in theory, possible. People walk in different ways. They swing their legs, their arms in different ways, and it might very well be possible to identify a person just by the way they walk. Just by getting a video of how they walk, we can identify the person. So uh, this field, it's a work in progress. But, it, as I said, it is the future of identifying people in crowds. Biometrics, whatever it might be, whether it's iris scans or, or, or facial recognition, they are always, there are always four parts to it. There's the enrollment, that's getting the information, like getting a picture of the person and, and identifying things with that, or getting a video of the person. Pre-processing, that is, it, it's noting, making a note of what is useful, like the eyes, the nose, uh, the distance between the eyes and the nose. Uh, also, it includes removing blemishes like uh, like a little like uh, like static or something like that, or a uh, little, you know, let's say dust motes that get in the picture. Who knows what? But all kinds of things that have to be removed. Garbage getting removed. That's part of the pre-processing. Then there's the feature extraction. This is one of the hardest parts. It's from the picture or from the data, getting numerical values out of that that are unique to the person. And finally, the template generation is saving this information 
and organizing it so it can be automatically scanned by a computer for a match. Let's look more at the enrollment. Uh, this is obtaining information. For example, it's a picture. A picture of someone's face. We want facial recognition. Get a picture. That's the first thing you have to do. The, or even an iris scan. you got to get a picture. Uh, sound of a person's voice. We want a voice print of the person. You need the sound. Record the sound. And that's relatively easy. We do have, we do have, we do have, you know, cameras, digital cameras, and uh, you know, sound recordings that are digitized. So, um, you know, this this is really not the difficult one. It's getting the person to actually uh, present his data, uh, you know, the biometric data. There's pre-processing. That's like removing the garbage. Um, making sure that you know that uh, that the lighting is correct. Uh, you know, this is again easy enough. These, these are easily easy enough to identify. It's an important part because we don't want bad things confusing it. It's also making sure that it's that's like in the right orientation. That's pre-processing. Then the most difficult part: the feature extraction, finding the patterns that are specific to this of the, to a person, and finding ways to, to digitize this idea, like the distance between cheeks and the eyelids, or the two eyes, and the nose and the left eye, and the nose and the right eye, all these things, or the tones and speeds used for words, finding out what makes it unique, and saving the numbers that come out of, of this identification of uniqueness in the picture, or in the video, or in the recording. And finally, template generation, once you have all that information, you have to put it into um, a, a searchable, easily searchable form for computers to make it a, to make it automatic. So if you do this to millions of people, it'll be easy to get your you know, your questioned or your suspected image and relate it to the millions that are on file. So you have to have it uh, in a day in a database that's easily comparable and then searchable. Well, one of the things that one of the you know becoming popular or one well it's 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 not that popular but you know a lot of people do use it when people instead of fingerprints it's a retinal scan and that is again it's a form of biometrics where uh, a person is identified uniquely by what is the patterns of his retina so what is the retina i mean uh, here it is uh, the retina is you know here's the eye here's the eyeball that you can probably see right around here it's the white part the iris over here that's the brown part. That's the colored part of it. Uh, it expands to uh, shrink the, the the black inside it because sometimes there's too much light, and it expands in the dark so that more light gets in. Uh, there's the black is the pupil. Well, it doesn't no black here, but this is the pupil. Uh, that's black in everybody's eye. Uh, that light goes right through it and gets the optic nerve. But here's all the the nerve cells that are the 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 the, ner the, the, the blood vessels and capillaries that are all over the eye. And this forms, that is the retina. This is all these, all these, um, the back of the eye that has all these, these, um, these blood vessels. So a retinal scan will actually see this. And everybody's pattern of veins and capillaries and whatever is seen in this retinal scan, everyone is different. And people can be identified by it. That is a retinal scan. Again, it's a form of biometrics. It's a part of the human body. That makes it unique to people and can people can be identified by that there is the same thing with the iris this is more modern uh, the the retinal scans have been around for a little bit iris scans are